it was really, really an incredible experience for me to finally have such a stronger testimony that there is a God and God loves me. And this restoration is just so real in so many ways. And, and I was just so thankful for it. And I, I really wanted my family to be able to experience it too. But like you said, they were uh, not, not happy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Today we have with us Tony Fieldson. Uh, Tony and I have been in contact for, for a little while. We're both involved in some, uh, some Latter-day Saint related projects. Um, and we're going to hear Tony's conversion story today. I am not familiar with it yet, um, so I'm going to be hearing it along with all of you. And uh, But before we jump right in, okay, I got I to gotta make a caveat here, you guys. I'm not a techie person, so um, I'm not quite sure how this whole recording interview thing works. So if I end up just being like a small box in the corner of the screen, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But we're here for Tony either way. So uh, you've seen enough of my face. We're happy to see Tony <laughs> here. But Tony, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about some of the projects you're involved in. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Well, I was born and raised in Southern California, and uh, I'm married. I have two precious little girls. They're four and a half and three years old, and I'm a teacher. I'm a junior high teacher. I've been teaching for eight years. I teach Spanish and history. Really love it, and I've started a YouTube channel recently called The Restoration Table, where I'm trying to share all of the greatest gems from the restoration, and at the same time, I'm trying to build bridges of understanding and friendship with people who have some differing views about the restoration. I really want to prove that we can still be brothers and sisters and get along even despite some of our differences and still build on a lot of our common ground. So that's a little bit about me. And I will say, I really appreciate the, the tone of, uh, I haven't seen all of your videos, but what I have seen, I'm really, uh, I'm really grateful for your tone. It's very ecumenical. It's very uh, friendly for those who might not be members of our faith. Um, and, and I think that, man, Talking religion nowadays is a is a rough deal, especially <laughs> yes. online. So any any push towards unity uh, between faiths, I'm a, a big fan of. And as I understand it, uh, a lot of what you're working on now, it, it has kind of grown f out from your story of conversion, right? Totally. So let's let's just rewind. Um, have you been a member of the church your whole life, or what's the story here? Yeah, so I actually was baptized Catholic. So I grew up in Southern California, and my mother is Cuban, 100% Cuban. I'm really proud of my Cuban heritage. My grandparents grew up during the days of Castro, and they have a lot of crazy stories during that time. But so I was baptized Catholic. I have one younger brother, and we didn't really go to church very much growing up. It was kind of more out of tradition. And um, but you know, my parents are incredible people. My father is a marriage and family therapist, and my my mother is a teacher. I think that's. The combination of those two things is part of the reason for me starting this YouTube channel because I love teaching and sharing and I also love building bridges and, and promoting, you know, emotional maturity and emotional intelligence and, and healthy dialogue, which I've learned a lot from my dad. So, um, but yeah, I had a really great growing up years, enjoyed playing sports and, and uh, really large extended family around, around here. And, you know, religion wasn't really a big part, like I said, growing up um, of my life. But when I got into high school, uh, my mom was kind of seeking for a greater relationship with God. And uh, we found this big evangelical church, one of those mega churches that have a rock band and all that kind of stuff. And oh, yeah. it was great. Yeah. You know, I, I really liked it. Um, and it was good. Um, during that time as well, I always kind of like to be vulnerable and share this as well. I, I went through some social struggles in high school and middle school. Um, I felt like I had a lot of friends in elementary school that I played sports with, but they, they kind of became part of the cool group that would make fun of people, you know, in junior high and high school. And I was just probably a little socially awkward too. I, I just felt kind of, I uh, went through a period of depression where I didn't really feel like I had a lot of friends sitting alone at lunch and stuff like that. And um, subsequently now, one of the things I've done as a teacher is I've started this club where we go around at lunch and before school and talk to people who are sitting alone. So that's a big part of my heart. But um, so yeah, the, the, the evangelical church was really great. Um, you know, in college, I went through a little bit of a downward spiral where I was making some un unhealthy choices and things were going in a really, really bad direction. And my mom, I think, saw that was happening. And so she invited me to go to El Salvador on a missions trip with the church, the evangelical church. Cool. And that just completely planted a huge seed in my heart to see those people 
you know, just to get out of my element for a while, my friends I was hanging out with and just be there and see the poverty and just how these people were so amazing and so happy and so full of gratitude. It really planted a huge seed inside of me. So I came home and I really started to try to reach out to God more and pray more and read the Bible. And they asked me to be part of the high school ministry. I was one of the leaders helping out with the high school kids in the church. And then at that time, I had a couple of friends who were members of the church uh, who were Latter-day Saints. One I met in high school and what I met in college. And one of my friends, they took me to general conference. They asked me if I wanted to go to general conference and I had never even known that much about the church before, but it was an impactful experience to me. And it was, you know, I went to Deseret Book and checked out some books, started reading the Book of Mormon. And I remember at general conference, one of the talks was, the, the title of the talk was uh, The First Generation. And they were talking to people who are converts and how can that be such a blessing to their ancestors. And I remember I kind of felt like he was speaking to me. So anyway, um, my friend also invited me to the Institute of Religion. And the Institute teacher, you know, he figured out what my last name was. And my last name is Fieldson. And he asked me how, how, how it was spelled. So he wrote it on the chalkboard and it's F-I-E-L-D-S-O-N. He's like, oh, that's a sign that you're supposed to be a member of the church or something. So it was kind of funny. So, um, you know, I just started getting exposed. You know, I was kind of like comparing the two different churches. I was attending my parents' evangelical church, and then I was attending the LDS Singles Ward. I mentioned I had two friends who were members of the church. One of my other friends got home from his mission. I started asking him questions. And, you know, um, I kind of began this investigation process for like six months, you know, just kind of comparing the two. And, uh, you know, I just had some different things that happened. I remember one time, you know, I got home from general conference and I was reading this essay for a school. I was attending Cal State Long Beach at the time. And I was reading this essay and all of a sudden I stopped and I just thought to myself, you know, I've just been to this general conference thing. You know, I was like, is this restoration thing really true? And I wrote a note out, you know, I wrote a note to myself. That's what I did in those days. And I was kind of asking God, kind of praying to God, hey, is this thing true? And I wrote this note out on a piece of paper and I I continued reading the essay. I picked up where I left off and the very next sentence I read, the word restoration was in that sentence. I was like, whoa, that's kind of weird. And that that word didn't occur any other part of the essay. So I was like, whoa. So I I went to school the next day. I was attending Cal State Long Beach and I was wondering to myself, you know, the the thought came to my mind. I was, I wonder where the Institute of Religion here, you know, I wonder where it is at Cal State Long Beach because I had been to one, you know, like 30 minutes south where that teacher wrote my name. Um, And so I was just kind of wondering, I thought I'd, want to check it out, but I had no idea where it was. I'd been going there for two years. So I wrote a note to myself once again to remind me. And um, I attended my first class that day. And all of a sudden, I was going to my next class. And right in front of me, there was this booth set up. And it had a big sign above it that said, Welcome to the Institute. And there were two missionaries there and two members from the local ward. I later found out that was the first time they had set up the booth a whole year. And that was the same day I had that question. So anyway, um, those were kind of some of the beginning parts of uh, me investigating some of the miracles that happened. It's pretty, pretty, pretty crazy stuff. It's kind of so, looking up into the sky like, hey, God, are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah. So was this, I mean, it, what was the family dynamic like during this time? Like, were your parents totally fine with it? Or was there some contention there or what? Yeah, great question. So, you know, they kind of could tell that I was hanging out with some of my LDS friends and they were kind of wondering, they're like, Tony, are you really getting interested in this? And at at the time I I kind of wasn't completely honest with them. I kind of told them, no, no, I'm not. Even though I really was, Uh, I wish now, you know, if I could go back, I wish I was a little more honest with them. I just didn't think they would understand. Um, So what happened was, you know, I ended up just gaining a really strong testimony of the church. You know, I, I would read the Book of Mormon and I started meeting with the missionaries and I started attending institute classes and, and the, the local singles ward and meeting with the missionaries. And, you know, the way I like to sum it up is the quality and the quantity of the things I learned, the spirit I felt and the associations I made was just so undeniably powerful. I mean, I, I read the entire Gospel Principles book and I just realized, wow, there's so many more pieces of the puzzle to this plan God has for us, right? And I would read the Book of Mormon every day and slowly chew on it. And then I would just come out of my room and I'd have this spirit, this nurturing fire spirit, all the fruits of the spirit, peace, love, and joy. I could tell I had more love when I was interacting with my family. And it was just this tangible thing. I remember, you know, um, Elder Nelson at the time, Elder Nelson visited the stake. And when he entered the room, I kid you not, I felt this flooding of the spirit flood like the entire room. And it was, it was incredible. It was amazing. 
And later on the on my mission, when I served a mission later, Elder Holland came and he spoke to the missionaries. And I remember just being filled with this amazing spirit. I would go out and teach later at nighttime. And I remember bearing testimony about the first vision. And it was just such a powerful testimony. It like literally almost knocked the guy over. He totally felt it. And I know it was because of that influence of Elder Holland being there. So anyway, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but it was really, really an incredible experience for me to finally have such a stronger testimony that there is a God and God loves me. And this restoration is just so real in so many ways. And, and I was just so thankful for it. And I, I really wanted my family to be able to experience it too. But like you said, they were uh, not, not happy. Um, they were very, very concerned for me. Um, and uh, I understand because they love me a lot, right? And they had heard some negative stuff, right? Um, so they got some, you know, critical books about the church from the, the pastor of their church, right? One of them was called Mormonism 101, which kind of sounds like this, you know, introductory a, course. A, ba- a balanced introductory, but it's not. Um, so anyway, what they did is they ended up taking me to this store in Orange County called Ex-Mormons for Jesus. And um, they try to have this ministry to Mormons to help them realize the truth. And um, so I went there and kind of went through the refiner's fire. You know, I was exposed to a lot of the criticisms and stuff. And um, I ended up actually postponing my baptism just so that like my dad could have these kind of meetings with me and stuff. But they ended up coming to my baptism. They're incredible people. And I was really grateful. My baptism was such a spiritual experience. Um, my, my, my best friend from high school flew down from Hawaii to baptize me. And I remember him getting choked up when he was saying the words of the baptism. And I really felt, and I could even see in my countenance, I, sounds, I know it sounds funny to say that, but really a difference of like this tangible cleansing that I was feeling and this, this brighter, you know, brighter countenance and everything. And it was just such an incredible experience. Just, uh, there's just no way to describe how amazing it was. And um, I'm just uh, so thankful for it. And actually, I got baptized on February 18th of 2007, and I was confirmed a week later on February 25th, which is today. 2007. So today is the 14 year anniversary of me officially being a member of the church. <laughs> wow. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's so awesome. And one of the things you mentioned, I really liked, you're talking about just how, uh, like when President Nelson or Elder Nelson at the time uh, entered the room and just like this, this flood of the spirit just kind of washed over you. Um, and you mentioned Elder Holland and a couple other things. I love those experiences because they're so unexpected, you know, yeah. like yep. I, I had that kind of experience um, at the, the, the solemn assembly or, or the, the time, the part of general conference when uh, a new, for those who aren't familiar with our faith, when the new um, president of the church is, is you know, uh, set apart or whatever you want to call it. Um, so president Monson had passed away and president Nelson was, um, assuming the presidency and I wasn't, you know, I was just there, you know, I was watching on TV. Um, I wasn't expecting to feel anything, but then for just no, no, no particular reason, I just felt this flood of, of the spirit wash over me. And I was just like, what is going on? That's so weird. But it, but it was just such a reassuring testimony to me that, uh, that, that president Nelson was, was the guy for the job, you know, for, for the, for our day. Um, but anyways, I just, I, I enjoy those experiences because sometimes, I mean, there's a spectrum of spiritual experiences in everyone's lives. And sometimes you start thinking, Oh, was that the spirit or was that, you know, my lunch from a few hours ago? <laughs> uh, but when it's so unexpected and so strong like that, it's just, it's a really special thing. And I'm so glad that your parents you know, did, did they come on board or were they, were they tolerant? Did, yeah, they were know? definitely tolerant at the beginning and they were still very hurt by it. And it was really hard for them. Um, they've done a complete 180 now. I mean, you know, when I go home from my mission, we, I'll talk about that in a second, you know, but, but um, yeah, they're, they're a lot more positive in their feelings towards the church. They're, they're not any more interested in joining, but they, they definitely have seen that it's not just some quick little fad that faded away in my life. It was, it's something that's really had a, a lasting change and something that I'm really converted into and, and love. So they, they honor and respect that. And my, they, they've even come around to saying that they, they feel like it was God's will for me to join the church because they, they see how much good has brought into my life. And they even think that, they, that we practice Christianity better than any other religious organization they've seen. So they, they're, 
they're that complimentary. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. All right. So, so picking up where we left off, you've just been baptized. What happens next? Yeah. Well, you know, I just ate up the gospel and I've never stopped. I'm, 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 I've never stopped investigating the church or religion. I just, I just love it and just ate it up and just uh, continued to enjoy learning about the gospel. Had some other really cool spiritual experiences. I remember bearing testimony at this lady's baptism and I felt this like fire with me for like a couple hours afterwards. Like it was like, I'd never experienced that. I um, went, you know, going to the temple also just sometimes having that lingering feeling of that beautiful, powerful spirit with me for like a day or two afterwards. Not always it was pretty rare, but it just really amazing experiences like that learning as much as I could. And then, yes, I did want to go on a mission. I was 24. Um, I, I got baptized when I was pretty much 23. So a year later I wanted to go and my parents were not happy when I told them I wanted to go. Um, but they dropped me off at the airport at Long Beach City Airport. And it was probably one of the most vulnerable moments of my family's life. They had not been preparing to, to you know, not see me for two years. And it was really, really hard for them. And I remember this incredible miracle happened, which is we still look back on this today as like one of the most incredible miracles happened. So my dad and I have a really close relationship and we connect through music a lot. And so right at this time when they were about to drop me off, we noticed that there was music playing overhead. Um, and, uh, you know, usually I don't think I noticed music playing in the airport. But anyway, um, both of us, him and I, share the same exact favorite artist. We have this band that we both love. It's our favorite one. And that band happened to be the one that was playing. Out of the thousands of artists that could have been playing, right in the moment of our most vulnerable moment in my family's life, there was a song, and it's the Moody Blues. They're like this cosmic rock band from the 60s and 70s. They're kind of underrated. Um, but it was a song from them that was playing. And they have a bunch of songs, like over 100 songs. But they have one song that kind of talks about God. And it's called, I Know You're Out There Somewhere. And, somehow I'll again to you. and that was the song that was playing. Oh, so we were just like, what are the odds? Oh, my gosh. And we still talk about that to this day. And of course, I interpreted it to mean, oh, yeah, God's telling you guys the church is true, you know, but they, for them, it was more just like they felt peace and everything. So I was so, so thankful that the Heavenly Father came through for that because that just brought so much more peace to them. Um, so, yeah. And wow. then I served, yeah, I served my mission. It was such an amazing mission. I was in Mexico City North Mission. So many amazing experiences. And my parents even actually came out and visited me in my mission because they wrote my mission president saying, hey, you're a family centered church you know, and, and everything. And my mission president let him come. It was pretty amazing. And I got to show him some of my areas and things like that for a couple of days. It was hard to let him go and see him go after that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, was, uh, I, I'm just so thankful for these little tender mercies that, that God gives us in our life, you know. So cool. So cool. So did, is that kind of where your story ends or is there more after your mission? Not, not too much. Just, you know, came home and I've been teaching now for eight years and I got married to the love of my life. She's the sweetest, kindest person I know. I don't know how I got so lucky. And we have two little daughters now. And we're just so lucky to, to be parents of these two precious girls. There's just no, no way to describe it. You being a new dad yourself can relate. There's just no way to describe how, how yeah. precious they are. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I just continue to be on fire about the gospel. I guess that's where I can kind of end. I, like I mentioned at the beginning, I really love um, building bridges. I love, I love learning. And um, so that's why I've created this YouTube channel, The Restoration Table. I really want to bring everybody to the table, as they say, right? Let's all yeah. come to the table, kind of like at a potluck. Let's call it bring our favorite food and let's share our favorite parts about the restoration. And uh, that's how Jesus, uh, you know, brought people together. He was homeless and he's like, hey, dinner at your house tonight, right? And he uh, broke, broke bread with people and got together. And, um, you know, I like the word restoration. I feel like uh, there's a lot of other media outlets that use other names like, you know, Mormon or whatever, but I wanted it to be unique. And um, so, yeah, you know, I want to share all of the most positive and uplifting, inspiring, beneficial gems of the restoration. And at the same time, I, 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 feel, I feel really sad that, you know, often in politics and religion, people on both ends of the, of the spectrum, um, it's kind of this us versus them mentality. And they, you know, there's ostracizing going on and there's wedges in family relationships and caricatures made. And I would really like to just put our arms around each other and realize we have so much more in common than what divides us. And it's okay. We can, I really would truly want to accurately and fairly represent what up other people believe and yeah. kind of like you do in your channel, dig into some of the tough issues. That's okay. We can, we can disagree about how we make conclusions based upon those issues, but at least understand each other and try to build some bridges of understanding and friendship. That's what I'm all about. So sure. um, yeah. 
and I don't think there's 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 not a single thing wrong with you know assuming the best in people you know and just mm-hmm. giving people the benefit of the doubt that no matter what your beliefs are you're making the best spiritual decisions for your life that you can like it's not like really? you're intentionally trying to you know make bad decisions right so i, I just i think right when talking about religion with others, if you go into it with that mindset, when disagreements come up, it's okay. Because you know that, you know, everyone's just trying their best. We might not agree on conclusions, uh, but, but that's okay. You, you talked about this uh, kind of lack of unity on, online that we often see when talking about politics and religion, etc. cetera. Um, is that what prompted you to create the restoration table? The, the two main reasons I wanted to create it were, number one, I absolutely love so many aspects of the restoration and I want to share all that stuff for whoever is interested, whether it's people who are learning about it for the first time, seasoned members who want to remember it or learn new stuff, or even former members of the church who, who want to you know, still have some positive, fond memories of it, or maybe even stay open to learning new things right that they haven't learned before. Um, the other reason was nowadays there are more and more people that are leaving religion um, ours included. And that can cause a lot of deep wedges in families. And I have some personal friends and family members where a lot of times there's judging that goes on and um, people don't necessarily have the relationship skills to be able to try to like truly listen to somebody and try to understand them and, and realize that they're still a good person and not trying to worry about like, oh, is your life going to go to shambles or am I going to be with you in the next life type of thing? But focus on having a loving relationship with them now. Focus on the common ground that you still have and so my, my recent video that I came out with is trying to help people to do that. It's called 10 Keys for Responding to Your Loved One's Questions or, or Faith Transition. And I really want to help people to try to still have loving relationships, be able to preserve and even deepen their relationship, even in the midst of some of these you know, differences they might have with religion. So those are kind of my two, my two main purposes is to, to share the gems of the restoration and, and then build bridges with, with different people. So, so I guess but, uh, wrapping up here, my last question is, We've got a lot of people that watch our channel that maybe aren't members of our faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, maybe they might become members in the future. Maybe not. Uh, or maybe they are members of our faith and are struggling with, with their faith. Or, yeah. or, um, or maybe they're members of our faith and are struggling with family who might be judging them um, harshly for having joined our faith. Um, what would be your advice to... Uh, I'm, I don't know if there's a, a catch-all for all of those scenarios, but what would be your advice to those viewers who are maybe going through some of the things that you have been through? Yeah, yeah. You know, I would say just try to practice uh, an open mind and love, you know. Try to continue to model yourself. Try to be a good example yourself, right? Because not, not everybody that you interact with, they're not always going to be as open-minded as you'd like them to be. They're not always going to be as loving and charitable as you'd like them to be. So practice that yourself. Seek to ask them questions and learn from them and and model that you care about them and and want to learn from them. Try not to judge them. Try to love them. And the more you kind of give out that good karma, the more likely, you know, and and be humble and forgiving and and all that kind of stuff. And the more likely you put out those vibes, the more likely they're going to not judge you and they're going to be open to learning from you and they're going to be open to being having a charitable view of you and you're really going to do what, what our Savior wants and you're going to build those bridges and you're going to unite hearts and minds better that way. That's what I've seen. Wise words, wise words. Do you have any, anything else you wanted to talk about before we wrap up here? I just appreciate uh, talking to you, David, and I appreciate the opportunity to share my conversion story. I hope it's uplifted you guys and just please join me at the Restoration Table Facebook group. You can look me up online. My name is Tony Fieldson, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you guys and talking with you guys. I really love this YouTube channel. This YouTube channel is my favorite, my favorite YouTube channel on YouTube for the gospel. You guys kind of try to do, you know, what I'm kind of trying to do too, is you guys share a lot of the great gems from the Restoration, the evidences, inspiring things, and you also try to tackle some tough issues, and you, you, you are open about admitting, you know, some mistakes in the past, or you're, you're open about building bridges with others and in realizing that you can still respect people if you, even if you don't agree. And um, you guys give a lot of really good, like plausible answers for some tough issues and things like that. And that's what I'm all about too. So I just, I, I am so thankful to Saints Unscripted and you, David and Rachel and everybody for, for letting me do this. It's been a true pleasure. 
Well, thank you so much, Tony. And uh, just so our viewers know, we did not pay Tony to say all of those kind things. It's really, it's really true, though. I, I really appreciate what you guys do. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, if you guys have questions for Tony, is that all right, Tony, if they leave them in the comments section? Totally. Yes, please. And leave them in the comments section. PM me on Facebook. You can probably leave my profile link on the comments, I'm sure. And I would love to chat with you guys. Cool. That'd be great. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone watching, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And go check out Tony's channel, The Restoration Table. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. See you later, everyone.